just before I uh, take the exhaust off to show you, um, see the uh, problem I had here was the um, proximity between the edge of the exhaust and the bolts to fix it on. Um, I had to grind down the outer edge of these bolts ever so slightly to um, get them to fit sort of, you know, next to the exhaust. I'm not sure if you can see much difference there between the uh, standard bolts and the uh, ones I ground down, but there's just a few mil that I had to take off to be able to get it to fit. Now, as you can see on this exhaust here, the um, I've only got a small tack weld there on each side. Um, this was on the recommendation from a guy at work. Um, if I'd sort of busted it against the flange or you know put it through the flange and welded on the outside, then I'd have had even more problem getting the uh, bolts to sit because that would have been right on top of the weld. Um, so on his recommendation, I know it looks horrible, but um, put the exhaust just a little bit out so you've got a bit of a gap between where the exhaust pipe is and where it meets the engine block and then weld into that gap there and grind it down. Um, it's not the best, he didn't manage to get the weld too good but so I'm gonna, I've ground it down already and I'll take it back to him and get some of these little um, gaps filled in. I'll take a still photo to get a better image of it but um, yeah, so that kind of neatly solves the problem of having the bolt heads right next to the weld joint and not being able to get it to uh, sit squarely. So I thought it was quite a nice solution. So here's the uh, intake manifold I was showing you. Um, what I did was I took the original manifold, cut it down into sections, and then mounted it on the lathe and bored it out to 28mm, which worked out very nicely um, and then took it to a guy to get it uh, welded up so it was only really the uh, inside edge there where it was a little thinner that he uh, didn't want to kind of try and weld it too much and uh, end up sort of melting through it or something so uh, yeah it was just a couple of pinholes that I had to fill up with epoxy there. Um, I've got a section of radiator hose here to sort of do the uh, heat insulator gap here. I've got a Jubilee clip holding it on. Um, as you can see it's quite a thick tube there. The problem I had was that the um, pipe was sort of only coming, you know, diameter wise it was only up to about there so it was kind of bulging out and getting quite hard to switch on and it was causing kind of a, if you imagine the airflow, if you haven't to stretch that over then you'd have the thickness of the wall of the uh, manifold kind of making the uh, flow not very nice. So I got the uh, Dremel and basically it was a ground out um, uh, sort of a section in the uh, collar of the hose there. Um, it's quite spectacular burning rubber like that but um, it smelled horrible. Um, See, so yeah, I've done that and I'll do the same again for this end to uh, get a nice, you know, even uh, Sort of profile going through the tube there. Um, so I've got it all nicely um, ground out in there to sort of get a nice smooth into intake with uh, no corners and bits sticking out as you might have had from uh, the corner there. So I've got that internal angle sort of smoothed out nicely. One of the jobs I still have left to do is to make the uh, last section of the manifold to go between the rubber hose and the uh, outlet of the carb um, so I need to get a sort of bit with a flange and a, go into a pipe to go into that um, unfortunately I haven't got any more sort of aluminium pipe and stuff but I do have a great big lump of um, aluminium plate about inch and a half thick so I'm just going to hack a lump off that and turn a a nice billet manifold off the uh, off that on the lathe. So um, yeah, that's my next job, and I'll uh, post a video of that when I'm uh, in the process of making it. Now this engine originally came off a generator, and so I've got the problem that it's got a uh, taper shaft, which 
isn't really going to be useful for anything if I'm going to make a mini bike or go kart out of it or something. So I'm a little bit stuck with uh, what to do for this. I haven't got a uh, centre steady for the lathe that I have, and being such a big crank, it's going to be um, a, very wary of spinning it. So, you know, turning this one. Um, if you look back at, I think it was part three of my three and a half horse um, brakes engine that I was doing horizontal to vertical, I sort of uh, vertical to horizontal conversion on. Um, I just mounted it straight in the lathe and did that, but it had a much smaller crank on that. Um, something that I did see someone do on the old mini bike forum um, for a taper shaft like this was they actually mounted. They sort of took off all the uh, carbon exhaust and everything like that and put the whole engine on the lathe bed. Obviously sort of jacked up from the uh, base to sit on the lathe bed okay and actually used the engine block itself as a centre steady. So they had you know, the flywheel and stuff off there so they put the um, this end of the shaft in the three jaw chuck and then put a centre steady you know, a, a centre from the tail, the uh, tail stock of the lathe, in the end there, and then just worked on this section here, turning it down to three quarter inch to fit. You know, cause most um, centrifugal clutches are three quarter inch that you can get, at least in this country anyway. Um, so, if I can fit this engine block in my lathe, um, it's quite a small lathe, so I'm not sure whether this will be too high so you know if I put that on the lathe bed you know, I think the uh, centre might be lower than that there but um, it's worth a look if not I'll take it to my friend who has a much bigger lathe and he has centre steadies and stuff so I can do it all properly but um, yeah I'll be doing something with that at a later stage and uh, hopefully it'll work OK, so I've just uh, thrown it back together again. My plan for this engine is basically to try and do any and every sort of performance upgrade that I can think of myself, basically. Being an eight-horse engine, it doesn't have a lot of the aftermarket sort of performance parts like the five-horse does that, you know, f much more popular for go-karts and mini bikes and stuff like that, so, uh, you know, performance cams and stuff like that. I haven't seen any of those available for 8 horse engines. Um, they do do flywheels and conrods for 8 horse engines. The, obviously the uh, flywheel would be useful for this uh, horizontal engine but I've only seen conrods for um, vertical shaft engines for sort of lawnmower racing and stuff. Um, so obviously they don't have the dipper on the end and being the uh, so one of the points that fails at high rev, high revs, I wouldn't want to get sort of a you know billet rod for a performance engine and then have a stock dipper on the end and have that sort of fly off and cause a problem. So that's why I'm going to be machining my own conrod, you know, including dipper as well to uh, get around that. Um, one of the think of um, possibly wrapping the exhaust. If you see. You know, the proximity of the uh, carb to the exhaust. Um, don't want the carb getting too hot and sort of the uh, petrol starting to evaporate. So exhaust wrap might be one of the things I'm going for. Um, I have got an old turbocharger set in the shed somewhere, which might find its way on here possibly. Um, if anyone can think of any other sort of bits they can uh, recommend for it, I mean I've done the porting. Um, if I need it then yeah, tougher valve springs and stuff. Uh, if anyone's ever done any work to 8 horse engines then I'd love to hear what you've been doing. Um, yeah, so it should be quite an interesting engine when I get it all up and running and uh, sort of keep working on it to get it working more efficiently and more powerful and stuff. So uh, yeah, sub um, and keep checking back and see how it's going. Um, I'll be getting some sort of degreaser and paint strip and stuff because in between the cooling fins is sort of thick with uh, old gunge and stuff. Um, I'll be making the manifold for the intake next, and then 
yeah, trying to sort of decide what to do about the uh, vacuum pump, whether I sort of have a, uh, whether I use the vacuum pump off the uh, sort of valve chest or whether I have a um, catch tank off it and not use a full fuel pump at all. Um, if anyone has any suggestions on that, then let me know. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.